Hey, this is Dr. K from My Medical School, and today we're going to talk about vasopressors and inotropes. Specifically, today's discussion is going to focus on an intro to these medications, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the use of dopamine. All right, let's get started. We commonly use vasopressors and inotropes in patients who are hypotensive because of various causes like sepsis. But our body has natural vasopressors called catecholamines. Catecholamines are excreted from the adrenal gland and they work at different receptor sites. These include alpha-1, beta-1, beta-2, and dopamine receptors. Each of these receptors has a different physiological effect. So using different vasopressors and inotropes causes different effects on the body. Let's start by talking about beta-1 receptors. Beta-1 adrenergic receptors enhance myocardial activity, increasing the cardiac output. Beta-2 adrenergic receptors are located on vascular smooth muscle and lead to increased calcium uptake. When there's increased calcium within the muscle, this causes vasodilation of the vasculature. Other receptors include alpha-1 and dopaminergic receptors. Alpha-1 receptors are located on arterial smooth muscle and when activated cause vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction results in an increase in systemic vascular resistance. Now the dopamine receptors include the D1 and D2 receptors. They're distributed throughout the renal and splenic vasculature. When activated, they cause renal and mesenteric vasodilation. And now we'll go over the effects of dopamine and its effects on dopaminergic receptors. So dopamine is a naturally occurring compound within our body. It is produced in the adrenal gland, and it is a precursor of norepinephrine. But we can also give dopamine through a continuous drip. When given at low doses of 0.5 to 3 mics per kilogram, you have D1 postsynaptic receptor activation and D2 presynaptic receptor activation. This results in vasodilation and increased blood flow to the kidneys and mesentery. There was once thought that dopamine has a natriuretic effect and a renal protective effect. The thought process was because there's an increased flow to the kidneys, the kidneys demands are being met and there'll be an increase in GFR, but this has not been proven conclusively in any study. At intermediate doses of 3 to 10 mics per kilogram, you get beta-1 adrenergic effects. So you get an increased norepinephrine release and a decrease in norepinephrine uptake in the presynaptic sympathetic terminals. The results of these two effects lead to increased cardiac contractility and chronotrophy. Now, high doses of dopamine at 10 to 20 mics per kilogram result in alpha-1 adrenergic receptor activation and resulting vasoconstriction. These cause an increase in systemic vascular resistance and help prop up the blood pressure as well. So this was a brief intro to vasopressors and inotropes a review of dopamine. If you like this video, give it a like. If you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, place them down below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from My Medical School. I'll see you next time.